Next, let's introduce you the three ways of doing hypothesis testing. The first approach, uh, step one. The first step is to set up hypothesis, okay? And there are two hypotheses to be set up in hypothesis testing. And there are no hypothesis denoted by H0. All alternative hypothesis denoted by H8. You take the first letter, A, H8, okay? Sometimes people don't call alternative hypothesis. For example, our textbook, they call HA1, research hypothesis. Some book, they don't put HA, they put it as what? H0 or H1, okay, H1. So HA, H1, they are the same, no difference, okay? So in our lecture, I will use what? HA and H1, what? Alternatively, okay? Sometimes use HA, sometimes use H1. Um, no hypothesis. What do we want to test? Well, the coin, well, the second coin, right, is a failed coin. And HA, in alternative hypothesis, we always say what? H9 is not true. So by this kind of setting, you, among H0 and HA, you can only have one hypothesis true. You cannot have what? Both of them true. Because one is always against the other one, okay? Now, the hypothesis, the hypothesis can be expressed by words, or sometimes they can also what? Express by what? In terms of population parameters, okay? The hypothesis can be expressed by words or in terms of what? Population parameters. In our example, for example, well, in our example, H0, pi is what? 50% or one half. This means the coin, the given coin is a failed coin. And against HA, well, HA says H0 is not true. Having said that, there are three different ways for, for us to set up what? Alternative hypothesis. I can either say, well, H9 is not true because pi is not equal to 50%. When you see not equal, this is what we call two-sided alternative, okay? Or you can say pi zero is not true because pi is greater than one half or pi is less than one half. These two are what we call what? One-sided alternative, okay? And which one to use is depends on the researcher's what? Interest. So suppose I pick up this one. Pi is not equal to what? 50%. Suppose for this hypothesis testing example, okay? I pick up what? I pick up one. Pi is not equal to 50%, okay? Next, comments on what? Step one, in approach one. Commonly make mistake. Some student, they don't put pi equal to 50%, HA pi not equal to 50%. Some student, I found this in the final exam. What kind of mistake they make? Instead of use pi, the population parameter, they put what? Sample st statistic, X bar. X bar is what? Sample percentage, so it's a statistic. They say they want to test H0. Sample percentage is equal to 50%. Against HA, sample percentage is not 50%. And this is totally wrong, okay? When we make statistic inference, 
we make inference on population parameter, not sample statistic, okay? Because when you flip the coin a hundred times, you can get 50 heads, that is 50%. If you get 60 heads, that's 60%. If you get 40 heads, that's 40%. It changes all the time. It's not a fixed number, okay? So we want to test what? Population parameters, not sample statistics. Now, comment B, comment B. Um, no hypothesis, pi equal to 50% or one half. Look at here, the equality should always in what? Including the no hypothesis, okay? Not in alternative hypothesis. Equal sign should always come with what? No hypothesis, okay? And against HA, against HA. Um, pi is not equal to 50%, pi is greater than 50%, pi is less than 50%. Which one we should use? It depends on what? The researcher's interest. Well, I'm interested in this one, so I pick up this one. Usually people don't use what? What you corrected or what you see on the data. Say you flip the coin what? A uh, hundred times, you find 40 heads. And the second time you flip the coin a hundred times, you find what? 45 heads. And you say, huh, I think the coin may be what? Maybe not a failed coin, but the pie may be what? Less than 40%. Because the first time you see 40%, 40, 40, uh, 45%. Second time you see 40%. They always show what? Less than half. So because I try a couple times and I find more likely I see this one. So I want to test this one. This is not, it's, it's not, it's not really the criterion we, why we pick up this one, okay? We pick up this one because we feel interest about this one, okay? And not because you see from the data, because data change all the time. Are you with me? So which one to pick up depends on what? Depends on the research interest, okay? Q3, step two, okay, step two. Step two, choose a level of significance. A level of significance, we use what? Notation alpha, okay? Usually people pick up alpha equal to 5% or 1%. Why people pick a small one, number, 5% or 1%? There is a reason behind it. Let me try to explain how we define alpha, then you understand. What is alpha? Alpha is a probability of making what? Type 1 error. And what's type 1 error? Well, type 1 error is what? Given that H0 is true, but our decision what? Reject H0, okay? So what is alpha? Alpha is a conditional probability that given that under the assumption that H0 is true, what is the probability we reject H naught? Okay. So in this case, alpha indicates our tolerance limit of making what type one error. But what is type one error? Look at the definition here. Type one error. Okay. Type one error. Under the assumption that H0 is true, okay? Under the assumption that H0 is true, we reject H0, okay? This is type 1 error. Under the assumption that H0 is true, but we reject H0. And what's type 2 error? What is type 2 error? Type 2 error, 
is that under the assumption that H9 is false, but we fail to reject H9, okay? And usually, usually, type 1 error, usually, okay, usually, type 1 error is a more serious error. That's why we choose one, a very small probability, say R5 to 5% or 1% of making the more serious mistake, okay? We allow only a very small chance, say probability equal to 5% or 1% chance of making what? The more serious mistake. Now, to understand better, next I'm going to give you some example and that explains the relationship between type 1 error and type 2 error.